you, you have to be ethical, uh, you have to be sustainable in a very quality oriented way. The rules to make the suspension has to be the same quality, if not better quality. protein injection. Why is it used? And how is it used in meat and seafood processing? These are some of the questions we get answers to in this special 3-Minute Market Insight where we interview protein suspension injections veteran Joe Prego. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Joe Prego. I've been involved with uh, injection of protein solids or protein suspension and in various species, starting off with beef, pork and poultry and as of the last six, ten years with fish. And this is why I'm here to talk about protein injection, what people term injection of protein solids into whole muscle. It's very simple. It started in the late 80s, early 90s. It was a way of enhancing whole muscle cuts by adding weight and quality to these cuts by using the same type of protein. So in other words, beef into beef, fish into fish, to use it as a natural binder to be able to capture weight and capture moisture so that the resulting uh, cut weighs a little bit more, is a little bit less expensive, but more to the point, behaves better to the end user. Added weight in a manner that is label friendly because it does not use any other added ingredients than you would normally use in a brine injected product. Um, Obviously, uh, there are ingredients out there that help you a lot, ingredients that are label friendly. Um, this protein injection does not get in the way of that. It enhances whatever type of injection process you're using right now. 25 years ago when this started, it was basically done in uh, products that were cured. Pork, ham, uh, turkey ham. Then it went into poultry, beef, um, and quickly followed into fish. We started off with catfish down in the Delta. It, it, and again, it was used as a cost saving measure and a measure that not only gave you the cost value or the cost reduction in operations, but also gave you a better product as compared to just a brine injected item. Right now, people are using it in pork, beef, poultry, and fish throughout the world. It's used at the point where you're uh, creating the cuts that are going to be sold to the customer. 99% uh, of all products being injected with protein solids are sold as uh, portion controlled frozen items. Uh, there's a handful of items specifically in the pork industry that are sold fresh refrigerated, but for the most part, it's IQF products, IQF, Pollock. Uh, in fish, for example, it's IQF Pollock, Haddock, Cod, or salted cured product like salted bacalao up in uh, Iceland being sold in uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy. Well, right now there are sites throughout the United States. Uh, there are sites in Europe, in Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Scandinavia is big. I was personally involved with about 13 sites. To my knowledge, there's still one site in Canada and there's some sites in China. Let's, let's take seafood, which I'm most familiar with. Right now, if you go to 80% of uh, manufacturers who are making IQF portions, they're either soaking 
or injecting a brine solution. A brine solution is basically water and salt. Some of them use water, salt, and sodium tripolyphosphate, uh, especially if they're not doing products that are going to Europe. What that does is it captures, it changes the chemical aspect of that portion by allowing it to retain a little bit more moisture. That gives you a winning edge over people who are not injecting uh, because your portion weighs a little bit more. And if you capture all the little tiny savings throughout the year, you come up to a great payoff. You're probably overall production yields in brine injection are probably one or two percent. You could probably double that with protein injection. The other thing that protein injection helps you do is as long as you keep the fall off, you're cutting your fillets and you have a certain amount of mince or little cuts that you cannot sell. Those can be put together in a package that can be then re-injected into that portion. What that does is it makes you use that endogenous, that natural protein as a quote unquote binder. But according to uh, labeling laws, you don't have to declare that. So it's a double savings. You save because your product weighs a little bit more. You have an advantage because that product behaves better than your competitors that are doing only brine injection. And three, you have a venue in which to use this very wholesome trim that would normally go to being put into a block and sold at a commodity price. They don't. Since this process started in the United States with pork and beef, it was under the auspices or the regulatory body known as the USDA, US Department of Agriculture. According to their policy memo, uh, 041B, as long as you maintain certain rules, and these rules are very simple, you don't have to declare the process. The rules are simple. You have to keep it less than 15% of the added weight so in other words, if you have 100 pounds of pork fillets, you can do more than 15 pounds. Two, uh, you have to inject light cuts to light cuts. So if you're saying you're selling a pork tenderloin, you have to have trim or fall off material or protein that comes from that pork tenderloin area. In fish, it becomes a little bit more simple. It's basically the same species. So if you're doing processing cod, you can use protein from codfish to enhance your injection process. If you're doing haddock, you do haddock. If you're doing halibut, it's halibut. So it's species specific. This was actually challenged by two countries in the last 20 years, and we both and both processes, the process marketed by Trous, uh, by an Icelandic company, and a process championed by an American company. The results were that. As long as you keep to the same species or the same primal group, as far as beef, pork, and poultry, that the process doesn't need to be declared. So basically it's a natural way of enhancing your product, gaining a little bit of a price advantage and still delivering a great, great product. Like for example, one of the things that we found out in the injection of salmon is uh, when we were doing salmon for the Japanese market, we would get salmon trim that was heavy in fat because the Japanese love the flavor of fish, as opposed to some of us that like our fish to taste like chicken. But anyway, we also found out that if we had a low fat injection, mostly all lean protein, that the curding that occurs when you cook salmon is reduced. So again, benefits for the end user, benefits for the producer, and lower cost in operation. As long as you keep to the same species, as long as you're under the 15% added, added solids, uh, you don't have to label it. Now, I'll tell you, some people have a skew, they code it so that they can track it, especially in the beginning of a process. But for the most part, it's the product to the end user is unrecognizable from the same product without protein, except for some behavioral or results-oriented, uh, you know, it's like, for example, very easy. 
on IQF cod fillets, we've discovered that the end user in a deep fryer or pan frying has a slightly longer time in cooking, which gives the chef the added advantage that the fish is not gonna go from succulent perfect to a hockey puck in five seconds. That protein holds enough moisture so that the product comes out juicy and gives the end user a window of opportunity that's not available to someone doing uninjected or brine injected fish. In the fish industry, I believe it's two primary markets. The first market is people doing IQF portions in salmon, primary salmon in codfish in the Pacific. There are, I believe, one guy up in Scandinavia that's doing IQF fillets. Um, the first seafood guy was a company that was out of uh, Newfoundland doing IQF um, and further value added flatfish. The biggest market by far in the fish industry is that of uh, salted cod because you know the, the, the difference in price of the raw material to the finished product is such that any advantage is very lucrative. The protein that you use to make the suspension has to be the same quality, if not better quality. You know what they say, garbage in, garbage out. What is that? The guys that do computer stuff, right? Garbage in, garbage out. The same thing applies. You, you have to be ethical. Uh, you have to be sustainable in a very quality oriented way. In my years working in Iceland, I found that out. I mean, we're using the freshest fish. The trim was incredible in quality. There are many chemical reasons. There are many operational issues where the quality of the trim determines the end quality of the product. You can cut corners in all your operations. And of course, you, are, you have different levels of perceived quality. And as producers, we have to address all those levels. Not everybody can eat sushi grade tuna that's been fed sake for three days before it's brought to market. Quality in, quality out. For more information on protein suspension technology, please contact your Tradex Foods representative. Keep tuned in as we have more exciting episodes coming your way from debunking seaspiracy to recycling ghost fishing gear. If you are not already, be sure to subscribe to our 3 Minute Market Insight using the sign up form below to keep tuned into all upcoming market insights. Have a topic you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Rochelle Ryerson reminding you to stay safe, buy smart, and eat more seafood. <laughs>